G'day everyone. Things are finally tidy around the place. Well, much tidier than they were, thanks to Kelly and Bill. Uh, Kelly and Bill are a nice family business. We get out here every now and again just to clean up for us a bit, and I'll link to their intro up there. Um, but we're just going to have a look around with what we got planned, what I think we're going to do over the uh, end of spring and into summer. Uh, starting out here with the, the Verge, you'll notice it's got this straw all over it. This is actually from somebody's guinea pigs. So it's a really nice way to recycle what is normally waste. So I go and pick it up from this uh, family down the road um, and we spread it out here. It's got bits of guinea pig poo in it and a bit of food and stuff. But really good as a mulch just out the front here. So coming through, come with me, I'll lead you up the garden path. I love this little bit in here. It's really nice and green and shady. We've got some camellias and our guava tree. Uh, it's a strawberry guava, which gives us these little tiny berries, and it's just starting to flower now. So if you'd like to come and have a look. Just flowering. And I'm hoping this year that I'll get to harvest it, and we'll make some nice uh, guava What's it called again? Guava cheese, uh, which is an Indian thing. It's sort of like a guava jelly, a bit like a quince jelly, but that should be nice. So the plans here are that I've got to remove these old garden beds and I'm going to place my large pots along this fence line. Now, if we look up at the road, we've got some fairly heavy traffic along this, um, not a highway or freeway, but just a fairly busy road up there. So these trees, which include my pecan and uh, the mulberry in there and an orange berry, will help break that noise down a little bit. But I've got to dig out these old beds that had the asparagus in there, um, which got choked by the tree roots from around here. One of the ones we should have a quick look at is through here. This is my chatoot mulberry, and if we have a look, look at these. Mulberry's growing. I'm really looking forward to trying these. And it's such a little tiny plant. Just a few of them growing there, but this is good. This little area is going to be for some climbing beans and things. Sort of semi-shade, so it stays nice and moist, doesn't dry out too quickly. So it'll be good for the beans. And our pomegranate that I grew from seed is coming along nicely. This little area down here is just going to be a, a herb bed. I grow parsley and chilies and a few other things in here. That's what I mean by a noisy road. Not many changes planned here. Uh, we've got our pawpaws and some other exotic fruit trees. My psyllium, I think that's how you pronounce it, uh, which is coming back to life and quince. We're going to train this passion fruit. This passion fruit with a snail on it. We're going to train this passion fruit to grow along this, this fence here. Because it looks nicer with a vine on it than just a plain fence. Um, right, we've just got some caraway in here and our lime, locut, and other trees. So, not much change here. Some exotic trees, not going to replant anything. Up on the veranda, it's mostly flowers, so we can attract some bees and it looks pretty for the lady curmudgeon. Uh, and on the subject of recycling, An old mate of mine who I used to work with retired down to Denmark, which is a little town south of Perth, uh, and he's got alpacas. And he came up to grab some other gear and uh, go to the Royal Show, and he left me some packer poop. So much like the uh, guinea pig leftovers we use out the front, I've got packer poop to go out on the garden as well. So that, I reckon that'll go really well. And it's great just to get stuff you know is organic, particularly if it's free and we'll put that in the garden. So, let's go out there, down the back. So that's the plan for the front yard. Apart from the verge, it's all going to be um, fruit trees, rare ones I hope, or at least a little bit exotic, but mostly orchard out here, uh, no grass. Maybe think of putting a frog pond in here. Hmm, I want to put a frog pond in, but I'm not sure whether to put it front or back. 
We'll think on that. Stay tuned. Let's go through to the back. Yep. Potato flour. This means our potatoes are probably almost ready to uh, to harvest. We'll check on the interwebs and find out if it is time. So now we're at the back. This is where I store lots of messy stuff like bags of uh, cow manure and potting mix and all those sort of stuff. But the interesting part is going to be running down this fence. In uh, the pots along here, um, it gets a full morning sun, noon sun, but then afternoon shade. So the sun's up there, a couple more hours and it'll get shaded, and it doesn't get any light until probably 10 o'clock in the morning, which means that this fence is not going to gather too much heat. Uh, so along here, we're going to grow mostly our vines. Um, we've got a few trees in here, like my wampy. Uh, there's a fajoa there that I've grown from seed. But look at this beauty. This is my kiwi berry coming along nicely. And hopefully will fruit this year. Got another little one next door. We have a standard kiwi fruit along here. Again, this is a really nice, quite pretty vine that'll uh, grow in there with some blueberries at the lower levels. Um, and on this side, we have some more exotic fruit. And this is where I keep them nice and sheltered. So in winter, I'm hoping that the bricks will warm up and radiate a bit of heat out to keep them warm. Uh, and in summer, they're relatively shaded. So I grow trees in pots mostly along here, and usually the more sensitive ones so that I can actually keep them shaded and moist uh, and well protected. So that's going to remain the same. Continuing along here, we've got the, the raspberries, and I'm not quite sure how many varieties of raspberry I've got, but it's quite a few. And as we can see, they're starting to come along quite nicely. There's a kiwi fruit mixed in there as well, and a passion fruit. But again, this is all vine, so that I can cover this entire fence line with nice greenery. Down here, we've got our experiment, which I'll go into in more detail when it's ready. Uh, we're trying to see what treatment and chemicals and organic stuff works best for tomatoes. So there's different batches of tomatoes, but that will be a while uh, in the uh, in the filming because we've got to wait till they fruit, if they fruit. This bit's my transit camp, uh, where we basically keep the uh, trees until they become decently established in the pots, then we'll put them out where we actually want them. I do have a bit of a problem with uh, scale on these though. You know, black scale. Anyway, um, in addition, we've got our asparagus beds or some of our asparagus beds along here. And that won't be moving, of course. They will stay there um, over the summer. And we've had a couple of good crops out of that. But this section is, as I said, sort of a transit area for trees that I'm establishing in the pots. And I'll move them over time. But lots of really interesting stuff there, like uh, got our ice cream bean. We've got the one I can never remember. What's that called? Tamarind. That's right, tamarind tree here. Dead cherry trees, plum trees, etc. So moving through the patio, which is rather cramped and messy, I'm using areas in here to shelter some of the sensitive plants. Um, and I'll continue to do so, won't I, Roof? Uh, down the bottom here is my true gooseberry. Uh, that needs cold, so it's staying in the... Uh, sheltered areas away from direct sunlight. Uh, pineberries and strawberries, of course. The greenhouse isn't going to change use over summer. Uh, I'll just make sure I keep it open to try and keep it a little bit cool. But I'll be starting seedlings in here, of course. And uh, it is ooh, our mushroom spot. So there's some king oysters that are growing nicely there. But I'm afraid in summer, it's going to be far too hot to grow mushrooms. So here's where we uh, grow the seeds, and we'll continue to do that over summer. And of course, you will remember Bruce. Bruce is going to continue, but he'll be left open all the time. Uh, and again, it's just another place to propagate some seeds. Around the corner, around the corner, this is where I grow the cuttings. Uh, so we can see that uh, there's one that's going reasonably well. Mulberry cuttings. So I grow them in different methods, either in soil or initially in water. Um, some more mangoes growing. A 
we'll see how they go. And there's a lot of other things that I've grown from cutting as well. So there's just a, a raspberry that's been picked off from a runner. So this is my propagation area, very slow to get things going. Uh, it's nicely sheltered, but still gets enough sun. Let's head up the back. This is another orchard area where I'm going to actually get rid of that raised bed, and there's another one up there that I'll get rid of. But I'll empty them out and move them somewhere else. But we have Bob the Blueberry, who's starting to recover, quite nicely, I think. Uh, but along this fence, we've got the pawpaws, which I'll put a, a new batch in, and I'll probably put another one or two in yet. Uh, ah, and I've got to pick those pawpaws, they're right. These pawpaws are all grown from seed, by the way, and you can see they do actually work out. Anyway, got lots of trees in here. Um, probably going to put one or two more in when I remove these garden beds. So I've got the pawpaws, we've got four different types of banana, the black sapota up the back there. Um, there's a small pecan down in here and a white fig. But I think once I've removed that bed and the bed further up, I can probably fit another two, maybe three trees in here, which will be nice. And I've got a mulberry in a pot there as well. I like covering fences up with plants, so here's a banana passion fruit growing. We'll train him to run along the fence. This is composting area number one. So I have three rotating compost bins, which take the larger stuff, um, onions and oranges, things that really don't belong in my favorite bit, which is the worm farm. I've got three worm farms, which I basically keep uh, topped up. And if we come in and have a look, you can see they're doing really, really well. So here we've got one, just a bit of uh, old mushroom substrate in there. And if we look under here, there we go. There's a heap of worms down in here. And this makes absolutely magic compost. And I'm careful with the stuff I put in here, mostly food scraps that aren't acidic um because we've got to have a relatively alkaline environment and the real problem comes in our summer when these get really really hot so i freeze water bottles um, and put the frozen water bottle on top of the blanket change it every day and hopefully that'll keep them cool enough to survive all right let's go to the yard around this little grass area which is where the dog does his business and has a little bit of exercise i've put some raised beds in just for a sort of mixed purpose. Um, my kimchi garden is here, and I'll link to that video as well. Uh, we've, got, uh, we've got goji berries and other things. A really interesting one though, is this. This is sea parsley. It's an Australian native and tastes just like parsley, only salty. So it's actually quite a nice taste. Um, I've let the uh, broccoli here go to seed because the bees absolutely love these flowers and I'm quite happy just to leave it there for a little bit longer while the, the bees buzz around as we can see in here. But I will clean that out once the, uh, the flowers have gone. We have grapevines covering the fence. Um, doesn't produce terribly well but it's just starting to get there now and then a whole range of um, strawberries and herbs, including nice little uh, apple mint there, uh, that we have against the veranda. And there's one worth looking at. I'm really hoping this succeeds. We come in here. This is a uh, tamarillo, and it looks like the fruit has set. These are one of my favorite fruits. They are absolutely delicious. They'll turn a bright purpley red and I've got lots of these little bunches of fruit setting on it. We've got lots of things growing in our raised beds uh, that I've talked about before. Uh, these warrigal greens we'll try one more time and then we'll probably throw them out or pull them out because uh, we didn't particularly like them. Lots of asparagus in here and that will remain so no real change. Cape gooseberry. This is my terrible greenhouse that I bought online. Do not ever buy greenhouses online, honestly, unless they're a, a known brand. Uh, these sheets are not UV stable and they've just fallen apart. But I've got a clear covering that I'll put on this uh, once it cools down again, uh, but I'll leave it open for now. If you can hear a high-pitched buzzing, it's my rat deterrent. I can't hear it because I'm deaf as a post, but the budget camera person tells me she can hear it. 
Uh, I run in here a lot of experiments. I also grow ginger all year round in here, um, which is not in at the moment, but it will be soon, and garlic. I've got some tomatoes that came up self-seeded, uh, looking really healthy, so I'm going to leave them in, and a pepino down the back. But again, it's just another area that's sort of semi-sheltered that I can uh, start trying to grow stuff in. Let's head up the back. Uh, this is my Kingston Pride mango, which I am taking some cuttings from and hoping to grow some more, uh, but just in a large pot. This is a, another fruit tree orchard area. We've got a plum, uh, tangelo, apricot and guava, black genoa fig, a kaffir lime tree, all in this rather compact area, all overgrown, needs a heavy prune, but luckily my plum tree has started to flower, as we can see up here. I'm hoping my other plum trees will start to flower now so we actually get some plums from it. Again, no real change, it's all going to stay the same. This is an area that I really want to do a lot with this summer. The metal mesh, the uh, sheet mesh that's down by the side of the house, I'm going to put two, maybe even three arches in this area here for some vertical growing. So we'll grow um, rock melons and watermelons and those sort of things over the three arches, which I'll put together over here. I think we've got a huge crop of olives coming up again. If we have a look up in here, We've got all of these olive flowers, both on this one, the Sagonia, I think that's what it's called, and also on the Kalamata. So if you look right up there, you see a bunch of flowers. This is my nectarine tree and it suffers really badly from fruit fly. I've got to get out and spray it again soon, but there's lots of bees around. I'm not keen to do that. Um, but it needs trimming back and I need to take a lot of the excess fruit off, uh, which will be coming up fairly shortly. And I can see a fruit fly right there. So this will be my area for growing the normal fruit and veg. At the moment it's full of broad beans, um, which are looking nice and big. I actually like them big rather than small. So we can see we've got some really nice pods there. A lot of this has gone to seeds, like the radishes here, but I don't mind because it attracts the bees and uh, we will clear all this out and put our summer veg in. I don't like this tree. This is a rose apple and it fruits all at once. These, these fruit here, um, about the size of a locut or a quail egg, one or two large seeds inside. Um, they're, they're nice, but because you get all of them at once, uh, you can't use them all. It doesn't make a very good jam or preserve of any kind. Uh, it's not overly sweet. So I'll keep cutting it down to a very small size and it keeps growing back. Up here next to my very, very productive lime, which is flowered and fruited again, we're going to get a huge crop of limes off that again this year, I think, uh, is my bulk composting area. So in here, it's a bit hard to see because we've just filled it up with all the work Kelly and Bill did. There's three bays. And normally what I would do uh, is not fill them all up at the same time like this but we would fill one bay, move it to the next, move it to the next, turn it, um, and in that way all the weeds germinate, then die, then germinate and die, and eventually you get some weed-free uh, compost. But this is very long-term. This is usually about three years before I can use it because of the weed issue. So this will sink down a lot in the next few weeks. Hidden up the back here, we've got a curry leaf tree and a bay leaf tree, which I tend to keep 
fairly small or they cast too much of a shadow into the rest of the garden. But there's another big garden bed here. I've got boysenberry here and blackberry here. But I planted these a long time ago before I knew anything at all and I put them in the ground, which was not good. So they've sort of sprung up all over the place and I've really got to pull them out, replant the runners uh, and get them back under control and then sort of kill the rest off. So I want to grow more uh, things along the fence here, probably put some passion fruit in and pull this bed out as well, get the old uh, boysenberry out of there and replant it somewhere else. And I've really got to bring my lemongrass under control. That is just everywhere. That was a quick tour of walk around, whatever you want to call it, of the garden, showing you know what we're going to be up to, kind of things I've got planned. Um, and I'll be popping up lots of videos on different little tasks we're doing around the place, things that I find interesting. And if I find it interesting, you might find it interesting. So if you do find it interesting, come and join me. Like, subscribe, get the bell icon, whatever you do on YouTube. I'd like to have some company. Put something in the comments. Let me know what you think of my garden. Have you got one like this? Anyway, enjoy life. Catch you in the garden.